had a, um, an awesome privilege the other day of sitting down with um, my four brothers, who are the tribal leaders of the Warramungu. And just talking about culture and talking about law and stories, and, and they, they were they were sharing with me some things that they um, you don't normally get shared with until the ceremony. It was just amazing hearing the stories, hearing how old the culture is, hearing the different slants of things, and also listening with open heart to some of the challenges that they're facing. Um, it's extreme poverty in some places of the t around the township. It's as bad as anything I've seen in third world countries. Um, I think what's contrasting and makes it feel worse is it's not the entire town is experiencing this extreme poverty. It's just very tiny Aboriginal communities within this incredibly wealthy town. Uh, Tennant Creek is a gold mining and iron ore mining area. And the billions of dollars that are flowing through here are unbelievable. You've got helicopters flying in, executives flying in, all that sort of stuff. And you've got people whose front yards are just filled with trash with no water, um, no power, no essential services whatsoever. You've got communities that don't have any water whatsoever and they need to be, and they, they're five minutes from town. And water needs to be tanked in there. Um, you've got type 2 diabetes that is the, the major reason people die um, cirrhosis of the liver um, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease all of these things are very curable and very easily addressed then you've got the travesty caused by alcohol I, I, I prejudged the situation before I got here you know the whole um, they, the bottle shops are, own, are open from 4 o'clock to 7 o'clock. Bottle shop is a takeaway alcohol place. But you see why they did it. Um, because they're trying to curb the large consumption of alcohol all day long. You, know, you can go into a pub and have a beer, but they'll cut you off and they, 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 they won't serve you anymore. And you've got these really unfortunate situations where people are lining up outside bottle shops um, you know to buy 24 cans of beer to go home to drink them all to come back again it's just it's just tragic and to blame the aboriginals and call them lazy and alcoholics without having a look at the whole list of trauma that led to this place the embrari sorry not the aboriginal embrari is the um is what they like to be called is the term Aboriginal, so, you know, the Mbrari, the people, the nation. Um, to try and judge them and judge their, their lifestyle based without out of the context of seven generations or eight generations of continual trauma, you, you know, being removed from the land and their home. Um, isn't something that happened a hundred years ago. It's something that happened like four and five years ago. I was just talking to someone the other day. And not having your own home is something that I was talking to um, in Aboriginal family structure. My grandfather, who was the tribal leader, um, talking to him, was um, he still hasn't got his right for land, his family land, the land that his forefathers have always had he still doesn't have access to it. So here is a man without a voice and without a, without a home. Now in, in Waramangu, those two things are very important. They, they say every man deserves a voice and every man deserves a home. Um, every man has a voice, every man has a home. And they are the two fundamental tenets under it. Um, and when you take away both a voice and a home, then you take away the purpose for the man. And in Waramungu, there are only two types of men. There are chiefs and warriors, so fighters, people who get out there and get things done. So you take away a man's home, his voice, and his job, and he's got nothing else to do. It's systemic trauma. It's genocide that's still happening today. There's this saying that it is the oldest living culture. It's the oldest visibly dying culture. And we're, we're literally 20 years away from people 
losing the stories and the culture and the law that underpin this entire nation, that we are down to the last one or two elders. The last, there's three elders left, storytellers, story holders in, um, in the Warramungu nation. And they're all old and they're all sickly. They've got very bad medical conditions. Um, so uh, it's tragic. It's absolutely tragic. And um, anyway, lots of things to think about.